Building an inclusive culture, you know, there's always this tension between confidence and competence. You know, we rise together by distinguishing overconfidence from competence, but yet they're hard to kind of separate. You give a great story in the book about Alan Mulally and how he did that when he first arrived at Ford. It was fascinating. When Alan Mulally first arrived at Ford, he came there from Boeing, where he had basically spent his career. His entire career had been in the world of aerospace. Uh, And he was hired by Bill Ford to be the CEO of Ford based on the way in which he had influenced Boeing's culture at that time when he was there in a very senior position. And so he came to his first meeting and it was with what they always called at Ford, where I'd done a lot of work in the past, the generals and the colonels, the most senior man there at that time. And I it was probably a woman or two, but he came to that first meeting and he knew he was going to be tested. And sure enough, at some point, one of the one of his direct reports stood up and asked him a very complicated question about a new model that was coming out that Ford was putting a lot behind. And it was a question that someone who hadn't been in the car business for a long time would struggle to answer. So what Alan did was very simple. He said, I have spent my entire career in aerospace. I am not a car guy. I was not hired as CEO here because I am a car guy. I was hired because of the kind of leadership model that Bill Ford is looking to instill in this culture that has been losing money significantly. He said, there are dozens of people in this company. He said, there are probably quite a number of people in this room Who can answer that question? That question is not my job. I don't have the competence to answer that. So this was quite something. I have rarely seen someone in a very senior position like that basically say, I don't know. It's not my job to know everything. That's what Alan did. So he was able to demonstrate a certain humility But it was also that he had a tremendous confidence in the competencies that he did have, which were different than what he was being asked about. Now, what's been fascinating is when I have told the story, you know, which is basically a story about humility and not feeling like you have all the answers, Alan never apologized. He said, well, I'm sorry, I've never, no, never, absolutely never He just stated the truth. When I tell this story, the women or people of color who are in the room always say, well, that would work for a white man. That would not work for me. My competence in every direction would be questioned. And so it's really important to be able to distinguish those, to identify and be able to articulate what our areas of real competence, to have confidence in that but confidence that is rooted in our competencies. 